What's going on everyone, Lilith here, and we have a much requested video for you today. The ultimate and comprehensive guide for the Blight. This guide has been in development for a long time, as Blight has been through many changes since I started writing this, but I'm pretty certain that he now plays as intended, and these tips and techniques featured in the video should remain accurate. Just in case you don't know who I am, I'm a Blight main with currently the second most rush hits in Europe, and in the top 10 for rush hits worldwide with hundreds of hours on this character, and I'd love to provide my knowledge to any Blight enthusiasts out there who would like to learn more about the character. He's the most fun I've ever had in Dead by Daylight, and although he may be tricky when you start off, he's a character that feels more and more rewarding the more time you put into mastering him. I'll quickly go over the Blight and his power for anybody that is brand new and might be thinking about picking him up. Blight is a killer with a standard movement speed of 115% or 4.6 meters per second, and has a terror radius of 32 meters, so pretty standard stuff here. He's a speed-based character who sprints across the map at 230% or double normal killer movement speed. This power is called the Blighted Corruption and consists of 5 tokens that recharge at 2 seconds per token or 10 seconds for all 5. Whilst in a rush, your turning is restricted and you'll be limited whilst moving around corners and obstacles. If you need to reposition and turn around or extend the distance of your rush, you'll need to slam into an object which will give you a short period to look around freely and plan your next rush. It's worth noting that only the last 4 rushes can actually be used to injure a survivor as the first one is only used for mobility. You can also break pallets whilst in a rush by attacking them like you would a survivor. If you're already next to a pallet that might have just been dropped, or if there is a survivor directly in front of you, you can perform an instant rush by hitting the rush and attack buttons extremely quickly in succession to complete the action immediately. The first thing I'd like to discuss in this guide is map awareness and object understanding. Anybody that's ever played Blight will know that many objects in the game are slippery, have no collision at all, or in the case of Badham or Hawkins, have very large hitboxes that will cause you to bump into things you didn't want to hit. Although some of these objects might be frustrating at first, keep in mind that anything slippery will allow you to hug an object incredibly tightly and get insane hits on survivors that you wouldn't otherwise land. Notable objects are the cars that you find across Alterhaven and Badham, as well as most of the snow piles in Ormond. Most famously, Behaviour has blessed us by absolutely drowning the newer shacks in butter, allowing you to hug around the walls and hit crazy flicks. To answer the question I've been asked a lot, I believe any shack after the Badham map rework should work the same. There is a technique for converting older shacks into slippery walls that Blight can glide off of that I'll discuss a little bit later on in the guide. Try to approach slippery objects from a slight angle to glide along them, turning into them as you travel to continue rotating until you achieve the angle or position you're looking for before committing to a flick. Some objects are more slippery than others, and in some cases you'll want to use the scoot slide technique to ignore even more collision, more on that later. Some objects have absolutely no collision at all, such as the low snow piles in Ormond. In these cases, try to identify the objects around them that do have collisions, such as the pallets, trees, and fire barrels. Treat the actual snow piles as if they don't even exist, and rush directly through them. Blight will continue traveling forward and eventually get to his destination. As a general rule of thumb, if the closest part of an object is connecting to your feet and not your face, you're more than likely going to slide off of them. Practice and experiment with all sorts of collision, and you'll soon start using these slippery objects to your advantage. Actually landing a hit whilst in a rush is not as easy as it seems. It's way too simple for a survivor to move a little and cause you to completely miss the attack. The trick here is to be patient and only hit the attack button when you're physically touching the survivor, because right at the beginning of a lethal rush attack, the hitbox is absolutely massive. This allows you to hit survivors that are not even visible on screen, as long as you time it correctly. Attacking too early will cause Blight's massive hitbox to convert to a longer, thinner one, which is very easy to dodge. Another technique that I use to hit survivors that try to spin me is a hit I call the shoulder flick. Effectively, to pull off a shoulder flick, you need to position yourself to the immediate left or right of a survivor and rapidly flick in the direction they attempt to spin. Think of it like a 90 degree flick that you pull off whilst already touching a survivor. Doing this will transfer your huge initial hitbox over to that side and give the survivor no chance of escaping a hit. This is a little bit tricky to pull off properly as you've got to be very quick at reacting to the survivor's movement, but with only a little bit of practice, you'll have it down in no time. But what if a survivor is in a more difficult position to hit or is run around a corner? This is when we need to flick. Blight is typically capable of anywhere up to 90 degree flicks, but there are particular techniques to extend this to 180 degrees and above. Before you try any of these slightly more advanced flicks, it's first important to get the 90 degree flick down cleanly and consistently, which will just come with practice. You can correct these flicks at mid-swing too, pulling back and flicking away from your original target in case the survivor tries to turn away. Using a higher DPI or maximum controller sensitivity will make these easier to pull off and with less physical movement, although they're still completely possible on lower DPI levels as long as you have enough 
mouse space. The first technique to extend the flick above 90 degrees is the Z flick, which I coined the name of after the 4.7.1 update. Simply put, this is a multi-flick that will require you to pick up your mouse after the initial 90 degree flick and flick again to keep the distance traveling. You can buffer these by binding Q and E in your game settings to turn your character left and right, although this isn't essential to pull them off. The actual timing to land these flicks happens mid-motion, so imagine that you're starting a flick, clicking in between and carrying on the motion until the full 90 degrees is achieved. Controller players have a simpler time entering into a flick as holding a direction on your right stick, clicking your attack button and just holding the angle will cause you to continue moving in that direction. If you'd like to see a longer and more in-depth look at how to pull these off, check out my mouse hand cam footage linked on screen now and in the description below. Another technique invented by Scoot is the surf or slide that takes a little practice but is really consistent in hitting extended flicks. In short, Blight has two forms of collision detection, the first being a raycast attached to your camera, and the second is a direction and velocity detection. By looking down whilst facing objects, you can curve into them and ignore their collision, allowing you to stack a 90 degree flick onto a 90 degree preterm. It's really as simple as that, but will take timing to get the right preterm angles down, and the timing to enter your 90 degree flick after to complete the full 180. These flicks act exactly the same on controller as they do on mouse and keyboard. The hug tech isn't necessarily a flick, but another tool on the chase that can give you crazy results when you combine it with the flicks we've mentioned before. Originally discovered by Princess, the tech allows you to immediately rush around an object by physically hugging it, ignoring the collision, and giving the survivor very little time to react. To pull this off, you simply have to use your time and slam duration to move towards an object until you're touching it, then start a rush. You'd be surprised by the kind of crazy hits you can get around difficult objects by using this technique. The most situational of all the flicks is the S flick, named after the shape the Blight follows when performing one. Effectively flicking in one direction and then quickly flicking back in the other will carry your original direction velocity whilst carrying your aim in the other. Blight is all about experimentation, so try out these flicks and have fun. Combine them and find out what works best for you to get the spiciest hits. Really quickly, I do want to address perks and add-ons. Because of his immense speed and ability to travel across maps in seconds, information perks like Barbecue and Chili, Tinkerer, Infectious Frame, Lethal Pursuer, Discordance, and many more will be dangerously effective choices. Gen regression perks like Ruin and Pop Goes the Weasel will make you almost unstoppable, and chase perks like Enduring and I'm All Is will make chases trivial. Honestly, Blight can benefit from the vast majority of perks in the game, but there are some exceptions. Hitting survivors whilst using a power will count as a special attack, so any perks that require basic attacks just won't work. In my experience, perks like Surge, Save the Best for Last, Knockout, and any exposed perk like No One Escapes Death or even Starstruck don't give you the same value as using them on other killers unless you go out of your way to use a basic attack. And where's the fun in that? Add-on wise, when you're starting out, the Alchemist Ring, Foxglove, and Cankerthorn will be your best bet. Try to avoid any add-ons that affect your base kit when you're still learning, such as the speed or slam duration options. Once you start to become more confident, start introducing some of these back into the game and you'll have an absolute blast, as they're all incredibly powerful. Muscle memory is key. Avoid the straight Garbo Adrenaline Vial at all costs, as well as any other detrimental add-ons like Compound 7, Placebo Tablet, and any turn rate modifiers unless you're playing on console. If you're looking for a particularly spicy add-on combo, try out the Blighted Crow and the Alchemist Ring letting you rush quicker towards survivors and instantly regenerate your rush tokens upon every successful hit. Every other add-on has a really unique effect and can be really fun when combined in different builds. Compound 33 lets you break pallets with your face, Compound 21 gives you war hacks, Vigo's journal makes you undetectable whilst rushing, and many more, so experiment and try things out. I have a full add-on tier list that goes into much more depth if you're interested in learning more. When rushing, try to aim for the furthest possible objects to slam against. We call this going long, as cutting each rush short by even one second will make a huge difference in the total amount of distance you can go. This will take some practice and you'll need to get used to the timing of each rush, but will pay off in the long run. Using your slam duration appropriately is key to becoming a master blight player. Use this time to move through doorways, away from objects that you might get stuck on, and use it to patiently watch the survivor. If you need more time to see what they're doing, bounce into the same object a few times and be patient to act as soon as you see them in a vulnerable position. You'd be surprised how many survivors will run if you just wait around for too long, giving you a really easy hit. Okay, now we've been through the basics of Blight's power, we'll be moving on to more intermediate chase-oriented moves. 
Blight's zoning capability is incredibly powerful, even more so than killers like Pyramid Head and the Demogorgon. When you're playing any other killer and you see a survivor approaching a safe area, you just have to accept that you'll be playing that tile until one of you wins. Whereas with Blight, you can actually do something about it and stop them from getting there entirely. Identify the area that they're trying to get to and rush to it before they can. Survivors run with a plan and when you interrupt it, they panic and give you the chance to get an easy hit. Usually these will be locations like windows, pallets, and open doorways. Be careful not to zone them too early, which will allow them to run back to safety and put you in the wrong position. I can't stress how powerful this can be in getting a survivor to ditch a certain area of the map that might be on their side such as Killer Shack or a fun bus. You'd have to be a three head gamer to keep running towards a blade after he already beat you there. Dead Hard is a dangerous survivor perk against many killers including the nurse, but against Blight it barely does anything if you play around it correctly. Basing a Dead Hard is as easy as rushing towards a survivor with the ability to attack but instead choosing to bump off of an object behind them instead. Repeat this multiple times if a survivor still refuses to use it, as they'll never truly know when you're actually going to attack them. It's also worth mentioning that if you start your lunge as soon as you see them begin the dead heart and carry it through the animation, you'll hit them through it every time. Sprint Burst, Lithe, and any distance-based exhaustion perks will do nothing against Blight, as even with a speed boost, you'll still rush faster than they can, but note that you should ideally not swing until they've been slowed back down to normal survivor speed. Blight approaches tiles in a unique way compared to any other killer in the game, as every map will swarm with objects, trees, and sometimes even buildings in different places places or rotations. You've got to be quick to identify what terrain you have around you to use to your advantage, as sometimes even a single tree in a certain place can be a make or break in a chase. In general, we refer to this as bump logic. This is where the majority of Blight's skill lies, as all the flicks in the world won't save you if you can't get into the right place to land them. Practice curving around objects, observe your location quickly, and develop a thorough understanding of your surroundings. Some tiles are easier to play than others, like the short wall jungle gym. We've appropriately named the vault on this tile as the death window, as when a survivor vaults it, there's really no way they can avoid a hit. Optimally, you're going to want to loot this clockwise, and use the wall behind the vault to launch into a lethal rush and hit the survivor. If the survivor vaults back through the window, you can hit them during the medium vault. If they try to loot back around the same wall, head to the pallet and double back to connect with them. If in the worst case scenario the survivor has enough distance to loop back towards the pallet, bump into the locker and try to beat them to it. Ideally you don't want to be looping these counterclockwise as you'll have to rely on objects outside the tile to catch them, although a clever use of bump logic should still get you back on track and convert into a successful hit. Long wall jungle gyms are a little bit trickier as there are many options for survivors to break line of sight and make it difficult for you. Depending on the angle you approach from, survivors will typically try to beat you to the window and find safety on the other side. If you can identify this quick enough, you can rush around the outside of the tile and connect with them as they're coming through the window. However, there is a good chance that they've made some distance on you already and will run back to the wall to try and get back to the pallet, which will give you two options. The risky one is to perform a 180 flick at the corner blindly, but the safer option is to again use bump logic to get inside of the tile, zone them in the center, and stop them from pulling the pallet down. Typically speaking, I'll usually try and zone survivors away from these tiles as when played badly, they can be time consuming in a chase. If all else fails, typical killer mind games should do the trick here. The Killer Shack is an interesting tile to play. When played correctly, this one is extremely fun and gives you many options to catch a survivor, but it can be a little bit tricky when you're first starting out. You need to focus survivors into staying on the outside, as these are the simpler hits to achieve. Identify objects on either corner nearest to the doors, as you'll want to travel through the middle and quickly readjust your direction. If you're approaching from the non pallet door, follow the survivor up to the doorway and scare them into vaulting the window and use this time to convert to another corner object to line up another easy hit. Although you'll have to be quick to act on this as a survivor can simply medium vault back inside and leave you out positioned. If you're looping from the window side towards the non pallet door, you should always aim for the door frame and not actually trying to hit the wall inside. Using your slam duration, you can shimmy inside the shack just enough to remove the survivor's options, as you'll reach both the window and pallet before they do, assuming you read their movement quick enough. Hitting into the door frame will also allow you to head back inside and convert to the window vault like we discussed before in case the survivor has significant distance on you. If you bump into the door frame and don't see the survivor going towards either the window or the pallet, quickly look to your immediate right and identify if a survivor is hiding in the corner. If they're not, use another rush to slam into the backside wall parallel to the window. From here, you can see whether they're hiding behind either of the two lockers and can use your next rush to connect a hit. But Lilith, what if there are no objects nearby to bump into? That's when the fun really starts and you take advantage of Buttershack. 
Due to the poor collision on the newer Shaq models, every wall around Shaq is completely slippery and lets you slide around the edges like they're made of butter. In this case, use your first rush against the door frame and launch into a lethal rush into the Shaq wall to hug them tightly and score an almost unavoidable hit near the window. You can use this technique around the backside of Shaq too, but be careful of hooks that can spawn on the corner as you will collide with these. As mentioned earlier in the guide, older Shaq models like the Yamaoka and Batman Preschool actually feature reasonable collision, so to slide around these, you can simply use the hug tech and play them similarly. The LT wall tiles are very unique to play and rely almost entirely on the objects around them to move in and out of them. Typically a great place to be is either parallel diagonal corner where you'll trap a survivor that vaults or fakes and land a hit either way. Try to force survivors into vaulting either side and try to navigate back to these corners landing hits around the edges if you feel confident. If you're feeling extra spicy you can 180 degree flick around the outside edges inwards using the scoot slide or Z flick but again these shots are risky and aren't as guaranteed as standard bump logic rushes. Pallet gyms are incredibly simple to play as blame. If you just want a survivor to move to a different tile, you can force them to pull the pallet down and leave a completely unsafe for future chases. However, this isn't the most fun or effective way of playing them. You'll want to try and land hits here on a survivor as there's very little area for them to avoid an attack. The wall to the left of the pallet is so unsafe that honestly, it's probably just worth mind gaming a basic attack around. The wall to the right can be mind game too relatively easily, although a wild time rush can hit a 90 or 180 degree flick on the corner that always feels incredible to pull off. If the survivor has already dropped the pallet, run parallel up and down the long sides until you have a read on the survivor and have reached either end. Ideally, on the longer side as there's less space for them to move and hide. At this point, you'll just be watching the survivor vaulting back and forth until you commit to the attack and land the hit. Whilst we're here, I'll quickly talk about pallet vacuums. If you attack a survivor that is vaulting a pallet and angled too much towards them, the game will always prioritize the pallet break over actually hitting the survivor. The key here is timing. Going for the hit whilst they're still visible on your side and angling harshly away from the pallet to skim the side of the hitbox and leave the pallet untouched. This is a really difficult skill to perfect, but it's worth practicing as it can cut down chases significantly. Next up, we have the four wall gyms, with four parallel walls all positioned evenly next to each other. With Blight's mobility, you can run up and down these much quicker than a survivor can and often end chases here easily. The trick is to quickly identify the locations of the pallet and the window vault on this tile, and look for objects outside that will let you navigate to the outside of the tile in the event the survivor does take the vault. Eating the pallet will shut down most of their options, but you want to be careful not to get stuck inside and waste your rushes to give them distance. Use your slam duration to move around the walls inside and read their movement, only rushing in for a hit when you know it's guaranteed. If a survivor does break line of sight, try to stick to the long sides of the walls to keep a constant eye on them and be aware of your total remaining rushes, as when played badly, these tiles can consume a lot of charge. Most other tiles in the game are relatively straightforward to play if you practice good bump logic. Pay close attention to the objects around you and play around with different ways of navigating them. As a general rule of thumb, you usually want to stay on the outside of a tile unless you're close to getting a hit, as getting stuck inside can be a nightmare to get out of sometimes, especially if they've already vaulted a window. In the smaller modular tiles around maps like Auto Haven and Macmillan, advanced survivor zoning can be used to position them in the perfect place. If you've got a particular plan in mind to catch a survivor, you can walk around or bump in a rush to reposition survivors to a spot that benefits you more. You'll have to be quick though, as survivors are fast and will move back into a safe position if you give them too much time. Typically, zoning survivors away from pallets and towards corners that you can flick around is always a good idea. Blight has the best map pressure of any killer in the game, which is important in keeping a team away from feeling safe and completing gens too quickly to manage. Ending a chase and hooking a survivor will put huge pressure on the rest of the team who now need to stop what they're doing to save their teammate. Your best plan of action is to try and snowball that pressure by rushing to another parallel corner of the map and pressuring more healthy survivors. If you're chasing a survivor who has been freshly injured and you spot a survivor in an unsafe part of the map, you can very quickly switch targets and juggle multiple survivors at the same time. The same is even more dangerous when you can inflict multiple survivors into the dying state in rapid succession as the remaining healthy survivors will risk their generator progress to help their team. Shoulder bumping is something that you'll typically see more advanced blight players do and although it's not essential, it can be a useful tool to keep an eye on survivors in a chase and improve on game sense. Effectively, all a shoulder bump is, is a sudden and quick flick before you bump into an object that will turn your character and allow them to look in a direction instead of facing a wall. This takes some practice to get down and technically ignores the primary collision detection that Blight uses, so some objects that you could originally bump into will now become slippery. 
In certain areas, this can give you a huge tactical advantage, like getting out of Shack Basement, for example, where you'd normally need to use multiple rushes to get up and around the stairs. One single shot of bump will slide you all the way to the top in a single rush. Advanced red stain mind games are combined with Blight's Rush to reposition survivors and land quick hits, but be sure not to use these too often. Change up your playstyle and try to stay unpredictable. Often, I'll look away from an object whilst in slam duration to hide my red stain and wait until the very last moment before quickly flicking my camera back in place to give the survivors the shortest time to react. I also use a technique that I named the Dizzy Tech, which is as ridiculous sounding as it looks, but it's another valuable method of catching people off guard. Whilst in slam duration again, make a back and forth motion left and right with the camera or make an infinity sign to keep them guessing which direction around an object you'll actually be attacking from. More often than not, survivors will struggle to correctly guess the direction you're rushing in. Another advanced technique is the bait and switch flick. This relies on good survivor reads, predictable movement, and extremely quick and clean mobility. Take this rock for example. A survivor is on the other side to us, and although we could use bump logic to create a loop around it that will eventually catch them, this could be time consuming and in certain situations still lead to a missed shot. The trick with the bait and switch is to rush and hit the furthest part of an object in one direction, give the survivor the impression we're going to commit to rushing over there, and then instantly using a second flick to turn and catch them running away from the other side. I'll note that depending on the survivor you're chasing, this can sometimes be an unreliable way of landing a hit, as a survivor that doesn't pay attention to your movement will probably continue running in the original direction and leave you in the open. Blight is a character that relies heavily on map knowledge, precision accuracy, and staying calm to pull off. When you first start playing Blight, you might be tempted to only use the Russian areas that you feel confident in, but I'd highly recommend going crazy and using it as much as possible. Over time, you'll start to gain confidence and understand how to navigate most tiles and objects in the game, and how to use the various Blight tanks to your advantage to nail the spiciest flicks on survivors. Panicking in situations is what will lead you to sloppy plays and miss shots, which will unnecessarily extend chases. Keep a level head and be patient before committing to an action. As a bonus, I'd quickly like to explain the Pluto tech as I've been asked about this one quite a lot. This is a less desirable tech and more of a collision bug, where you can get stuck between two objects without bumping into either and be forced into fatigue. It can also reference a survivor trying to intentionally get in the way of your bump destination to force you to slip and miss entirely. So play carefully when approaching a slippery survivor hitbox and always have a backup slam destination if possible. Blight is the hardest killer in the game to master, but put the time into learning him and you'll have access to the best designed killer behavior has ever released. Thank you so much for watching the guide. I really hope that it helps you on this spicy Blight journey, and with enough practice, you'll be having more fun than you can imagine. Make sure to share this video and leave a like and comment letting me know what you think down below. You can catch us streaming four days a week on Twitch if you want to learn more and see these techniques in action. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.